Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be converting my lathe from three phase to single phase. Uh, it's a 440 volt motor or something like that and it'll be running on, uh, we'll, we'll get it running on 230 when we're finished or 220. So we're going to use a VFD to do that but I'll show you sort of how I do it and what I'm going to do. And I'm also going to add a switch box as well for some extra functions. So you see see how I do that and some of the ideas that I've got. So I hope you enjoy the video and let's get on with it. Excuse the mess, but this is my Colchester student that I was telling that I was talking about. The the lathe itself is three phase, but uh, I have it. I, you, the motor can be run in delta to run on single phase. Um, so I've taken the motor out right now and I've cleaned the motor up. I'll insert some pictures probably here while I'm talking, but I've cleaned the motor up, uh, put the put it back together, put it in Delta, and run it off the VFD just to see how it, just to make sure it runs and works. And now what I'm going to do is try and establish how to get the VFD to operate the standard sort of lathe functions because there's two separate levers for starting and stopping the lathe, and then forward and reverse. Um, so hopefully I can get that all to work as normal which shouldn't be a problem and then once once I establish on the bench how to do that with this VFD I'll make it all work in the lathe. Similarly to how I've done this pillar drill here uh, last week uh, which is all really straightforward just literally the VFD runs the motor and there's nothing no electronics on the actual pillar drill itself now the original switch is off so yeah similar to that really. So I just talked to the camera for about five minutes and didn't press record. So second time's a charm. This is the, so there's the frequency drive that I have. Um, obviously my lathe motor that I've cleaned out and showed during the pictures before. The white cable coming out comes into this frequency drive or variable frequency drive. You've got the earth in, live, neutral. This is a 220 volt one. Um, you've also got the power feed to the motor here. The frequency drive should always power the should always be wired direct to the motor and then you should do all the switching off of the functions on this drive. So what I've done to do the func uh, the switching on the drive is uh, this earth cable here, the yellow and green one for the Americans, is um, that's the, uh, the comms line and then you've got X1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then a little power feed as well there. But um, you can set these up to do some of them are fixed as like fixed is what they can do, but some of them you can set up. So right now I've got X1 and 2 set up to do a jog function. So the motor can just I could just knock it little bits at a time. So it's um, might be good for clocking something in, for example. So I'll show you jogging. This might be forward or reverse. I can't remember, but I'll show you jogging in uh, here. So that's as fast as it goes on the jog function. But you can do that and then reverse would be. Then X3 does nothing, but X5 and 6 are forward and reverse. So that's all sorted. Uh, and then again, X6 doesn't do anything, or I've not set it up to do anything. So as it stands, it's pretty much what I wanted. The, uh, the driver's got this um, a variable. Um, I can never remember the name of them, but some people, it was kids at school, like I did, called them a dimmer switch, and I got sent out of class for doing that. But um, it's a variable frequency thing, or variable, I can't remember, but I'll insert the name in the thing so I always forget it. Um, but I want to get one of those so I can mount it somewhere on the lathe, along with a switch for jogging, and then I'd also like to mount a dial so I can have the RPM of the motor at the chuck end. Uh, so that would be quite nice, so I can work out roughly what I'm working at for the tooling. Um, so yeah, that's that's the plan. Ideally you don't really want to be touching any of this with oily fingers because it will only just disintegrate, it's only cheap and nasty. So th this is why I'm sort of wiring it in external from this VFD. Uh, so fingers crossed it will wires in okay. But at least we've sorted out now the jog, the on and off and hopefully the reverse function so I can work out, I can now wire it into the uh, into the lathe. So this is the main switchboard for the lathe. Uh, when I say switch, there's one switch and it doesn't even have a suds pump but it does have the ability to switch one on so what I'd like to do is repurpose this uh, rotary switch. Uh, there might be another name for it but repurpose that so I can run it on single phase 
Uh, th these three prongs connect up nicely to this block here on the underside. Uh, so I'd like to mount the VFD somewhere sort of in here and then it's all encapsulated. Hopefully it's protected from the elements that might be like the coolant and whatnot in the lathe. Um, I could also put an earth to one of these one of these prongs uh, and then have everything earthed off that as well. So there's certain options there for me which is really good. Uh, I just need to roughly work out how I'm going to fit it in here. But yeah, we'll get on with that now. Before doing anything, I just want to sort out this wobbly switch. I can see there's a thread in there, but it's the, the head of whatever screw or whatever it is is broken. So if I need to drill it, I'll drill it. If not, I'll, I should hopefully be able to unwind it and we'll see if we can fix it. So I managed to get this, this um, dial off, the switch off. Uh, I like that little design on it, so I want to obviously keep it original. So I'm going to, I just need to retap that hole. Uh, I did try a left-handed drill bit. But I just couldn't unwind it, so I ended up just sort of having to drill it. But drilling it, all it did was just wind it through into another hole in the other side of this. So I'll retap that, and then I can put this back on, and it should be all sturdy again. Then. So in keeping with its sort of original theme, uh, these four mounts were for the switchboard, the original one. Um, the VFD actually fits just between them, and it will fit inside the box that's uh, that that all goes in. Um, but what I've done is I've used my hand shear here and I've cut out the square of sort of that shape there um, and then what I'm doing is or what I've done is I've because this is the straight edge of the sheet that I had I've marked uh, I've scribed a line down there 12 and a half mil um, using my broken vernier caliper um, and then so uh, I've lined, I've lined that up, and then using this marksman, which I love, um, and if someone hasn't seen this before, it basically just squirts a little shoot of paint like that, but it's not a good angle. So, it's, but you can just sort of see where it squirts it there. But if you point it down, it squirts little green dots like that. But it's really handy for blind holes where you can't see. So. I've roughly marked it, I've measured it out and I've scribed them all with the vernier so it's all square. I'm going to do some hole punches, drill the holes out and then I'll mark these ones then once that's done. So I've got the plate mounted on there, the VFD fits the plate so now what I'm going to do is put it all, literally put the VFD on there. I need to drill some holes through here so I can put some grommets and that on um, for a couple of the cables but what's handy is the control wires are all above this so I'm quite pleased about that it should keep it all um, make this all easier to do because I need to drill two holes really for two pairs uh, two wires to go through so yeah I'll do that now and then be back so I've got the box cut out the back box the plate that's holding the VFD on is just hindering this very slightly sort of just kicking it over there because it's touching on this so I need to sort that out in a minute but other than that I could just make a box to go over it. I was going to weld it but I think probably the, for the best it would be just to rivet it on there, seal it and then rivet it on there with some body sealer. Um, like for bulkheads and things like that on cars, I've got a load of it so I'll probably use that and then, and then just paint over it once it's all dry. This will be hard to make out but you can sort of see the lines. Um, I've scribed it all out ready to I've scribed it out on a bigger sheet. I've just cut this out so I can cut it a bit easier on the shear. But um, yeah, I'll just I'll whiz this through the shear. I've got there's little folds here that I've created, so I'll cut them all out and then um, and then we can begin folding it. It was all going so well until I realised that I bent it this end one here the wrong way. Um, basically, I should have bent it all. Should have been like that way up rather than the way I've done it. But it doesn't matter, I can just straighten this out and bend that other end down um, and then it'll work. So I'll do that, do that now and then be back when it's finished. So just to show what it looks like, it's taken me about an hour now. Um, I need to trim down this one trailing edge here, I can't show you because I've got my hands tied up. But, so it just sits into the edge like that. I'm probably going to trim that one as well but that one just covers those holes there, so I'll just trim that back. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's done, ready to paint and rivet on. 
So using my temporary fastener kit, I've managed to hold it in place and then um, drill the holes out because it was kind of fiddly trying to hold it and especially trying to level it up that side because there's nothing to like sit on essentially. So that's all done now. I'm going to take this off um, probably do all that silicon stuff that I've got the um, body sealer and then we'll paint it and then yeah it's ready to ready for painting. So the box is all done it's not pretty and probably one thing I'm planning on making at some point is a press break. I might remake the whole thing but just make it a little bit deeper. Um, I've marked up these three prongs that go into the bit that sits there. That bit over there. Um, I've marked them up the same as an English socket, so a set of English plugs. So live, earth and neutral. Um, at least it keeps it all generic as well then. And then what I've done is um, I've continuity tested this switch to establish um, because it's So, like, obviously on that one, the motor and the pump will be on at the same time. So, um, I've, I've worked out which terminals do what. So, now I've got them connected in a way that the live comes in through the, the brass plug. Um, and it works as it should on there. So, I just need to sort of distribute it now. Distribute it from there over to here, which is good. Um, and... Yeah, we're all ready to put this back together now. So to show my progress, I've wired up the socket, uh, the quick socket thing. I've wired that end up as well. I'm going to, when I when I remake this, I'm going to make that covered because I don't like the bare terminals being shown there. But I'll put it back as it was for the time being. Uh, I've connected the switch up to it. I've tested it, it all works. I've got this nice little box from RS Components. I'm going to obviously mount all my switch gear on it for the lathe, um, all to sort of control the VFD. I'm going to mount it just behind these two speed levers, there's two bolt holes there. If I can get the bolt that's snapped off out the back of it, I should be able to mount it in there. So at least it can sort of sit somewhere on top of here. Um, it's easily accessible then with my left hand in between sort of doing stuff with the lathe. So that's the plan now, I'll try and get that out with my MIG welder. And if I can, then I'll see if I've got some bolts and we can we can make a little stand for it. So whenever I'm trying to do something like this, I always try and get the mounting plate done first so you could sort of something to work from. Um, obviously, as we can see here, this, I've got the bolts out and I've got it mounted. And then I can roughly work out where I want whatever sort of coming off of that. So I'll just take some flat bar, weld it to this and then it will be sort of up here somewhere and that should work perfectly. So I've made the mount for the back now. I'll re-bolt it on and then I'll put I'll offer this plate up, I'll square it up, clamp it in place and just drill the holes from the back so at least I know that they're the 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 um box is square. I should also add I've put a bend in this and twisted it as well. I'll show you why in a minute once it's all mounted up but I've done that now. So that's the box all mounted up now. Um, the, it's probably hard to tell on camera but you can see it's very slightly twisted sort of over that way uh, but now because it's twisted and it's twisted back as well when I put the fascia on with all the buttons it, will, it should make should look nice. It also looks very slightly unsquare for some reason. I might have moved it when I was drilling them holes but I'll square that up as well in a minute. I've got to paint it as well still so I'll paint it and I'll be back when it's all painted. So this is the motor from the lathe. I did actually take it apart and grease it up and clean the bearings out but I managed to buy some bearings from RS Components so I'm going to just put those in there. Um, but this was the, I was going to show the little puller that I made. Um, I've got a hole finder for round objects so I just scribed a line across um, across the face of this uh, and then I marked two holes from the centre uh, they're M6s, just drilled them through and a bolt through the middle of this and it just works perfectly just to press that off of the shaft. So just to show it coming off. I 
cleaned it up as well last time I had it off so it's coming off quite easily and then to put it back on all I did was I used my um, my, my like blowtorch just heated the the wheel up and it literally just slid on straight on perfectly it wasn't binding I didn't have to hammer it um, and uh, yeah it goes on perfect but anyway we'll be back in a minute so I've just changed the bearings in this motor. I just wanted to show, I haven't greased it, but I just wanted to show you how little drag these bearings have. It's just absolutely effortless. Oh, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Oh, look at that. Oh, great job. So I'll grease them up and then, um, yeah, it's ready to go. That's the motor back in now, or back on the plate now. I just need to bolt it down, move it to these holes here and bolt it down. I took it all out, cleaned underneath everything, cleaned the sides and everything. Obviously it's all internal so you don't see it, but there was loads of grease and rubbish in there so I sort of just brushed it out and scraped it out. So that's all clean now. I'll bolt this down and then we can uh, get on with putting everything together then. So whilst I was sorting the electrics out, or just undoing some of the old electrics, I noticed um, the brake housing was sort of underneath the drive wheel so I've pulled the the drum drive wheel off um, and just cleaned all the brake out and whilst I've been doing that I've just been sort of cleaning the back and cleaning all the, um, the gunk out everywhere so I'm going to put the brake back together now and then start running the wiring so I've got the control box on now I got the cable feed. This is the old one from the pillar drill, but so I've just sort of reused it. Um, I'm going to mount it into the switched area for the the forward and reverse, which is in there. I'm going to mount it in the side of there. So I've got to cut that down in a minute, fit that on there, and then I can just run all the cables and wire it up. So I know it all looks really messy, and that's because it is really messy. Um, it's been a bit of a faff trying to get everything where I want it, but I've got the cables now run from there down to the rotary switch here. Everything apart from two of them, or well, everything apart from one of them, are all low voltage. So I'm going. So I'm happy with that. And these, the two that are 230 volt, are all um, like they've tucked right out the way there. So. They're not going to rub on anything. The the rest of them are all signal wires basically. The pressure switch there is all wired up now, ready to use. So annoyingly I'm going to have to leave it there for this video because it's getting pretty long. But next video, which will be in two weeks from the release of this one, I'll complete all the, all the last bits that I need to do and have it up and running. I hope you enjoyed the video though. Like and subscribe um, and all that jazz below and stuff. But yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.